Welcome to Office Hours. Today is March 10th, 2022. Uh, we are joined here by Darren Clay on the Microsoft Education team. He serves as a customer success manager, um, and he's going to be talking about OneNote. So we're super excited to have you here today, Darren. Um, my name is Gary Chandler. I'm your single host for today, uh, but that is OK. We're excited for the rest of the team to join us later. Um, so Darren, I will kick it over to you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Garrett. I'm happy to be here with everybody Everybody today. As Garrett mentioned, I'm supporting the Southeast, so I see some Southeastern friends on the call, so super excited to be with you. But OneNote is my first love, so I couldn't be more uh, thrilled to share a few updates and actually a few tips that are not actually updates, but maybe uh, what I like to call hidden gems. So excited to share those as well. My journey with OneNote, just a personal story here, goes back many years. Um, this is a blog that I wrote back in 2016 uh, when I was a school administrator. We were going paperless at the time, and I know that's commonplace now, but imagine, you know, really five, six years ago, that wasn't the norm, and we used OneNote uh, class notebook as our primary kind of mechanism to, to move that work uh, forward. So we're going to kick things off a little bit different than usual. Uh, we're going to start off with some OneNote trivia. So let's go over protocol first. So I'm going to ask a question and we're going to apply the waterfall technique where you go ahead and load up your answer. And when I give you the keyword waterfall, and I might throw a little splash in there, but when I give you the keyword waterfall, you're going to hit submit and go ahead and type your answer. All right. So I have five questions ready to go um, for you. So go ahead and get the creative juices uh, flowing. So question one, this is a tough one because it's kind of tricky the way it's worded, but technically speaking, how many versions of OneNote exist? OK, I'm going to I'm going to when I say the word waterfall. You're going to go ahead and hit enter, so go ahead and load up your answers. I'm going to give it about 10 more seconds. How many versions of OneNote currently exist? And waterfall, go ahead and hit submit. So I knew I was going to stump many of you on this. I see a lot of threes, fours, ones in the ch chat. But technically, if we want to get technical, there's eight. And, and, and I'm just a messenger. There's currently eight. For today's purposes, we call this OneNote Desktop, but previously known as OneNote, you know, 2016. But technically, we're going to use OneNote Desktop. But there's technically eight. I'm just I'm just a messenger here. Um, and I knew that was going to stump a few people, but um yeah the mobile the different mobile versions because there are a few differences between uh the, the the versions there all right next question oh this is a tough one one note supports embedding content from blank number of sites and services so when you think about all the ways you can embed content you can embed a form you can embed a sway thing link youtube how many how many? I'm gonna give you about 10 seconds and then we're gonna go ahead and shoot those answers over. All right, go ahead and waterfall your answers in. Two hundred and fifty. <laughs> Maybe one day, not quite. <laughs> All right, so uh, 37. If you go to this link, and I'll be sure to drop this link in the chat, but aka.ms slash OneNote Embed, you can actually see all the supported ways or um, supported sites and services that are currently embedded inside of OneNote. Yeah, so 37. And somebody actually had that answer, I think jokingly earlier, somebody put in a 37 for the, the first question, but um, <laughs> 37. All right, next question. Who invented OneNote? This is like bonus points. Who invented OneNote? Early 2000s. Yep, I thought it was Mike Thompson too. <laughs> go ahead and go ahead and submit your answers. 
the the brainchild behind OneNote was actually Chris Prattley. He's actually still on the Microsoft team to this day. <laughs> All right. This one, I hope you, I hope you get this one because many of you use it or are familiar with it. So I am giving you a lifeline here. But which current OneNote feature evolved from a hackathon back in the early 2010s? You can probably guess this one. All right, shoot out your answers. One note class notebook. <laughs> One note class notebook. All right, final question I have for you. One note was made for two types of people. For two types of people. What are the two types? So you can think about personality types, but two types of people. My answer is going to be tough. You're probably you probably will land somewhere on the answer, but two types of people. <laughs> Some very funny answers coming in. OK, so I got this. I got this answer from the directly from the product team. So. This is how it was uh, framed to me. Two types of people. I asked it. Oh, writers and readers. That's a good one. That's a good one. Crafters and students. We, we are getting warm. I'm trying not to give away the answer. Oh. We're getting warm. Crafters and students. OK, I'll give it away. Pilers and filers. Why do we say that? Because with OneNote, the beauty of it is it's an everlasting pages and sections, and you can just pile on content and information. So it was designed for that purpose to just dump, you know, all your content and information over time. And as also with the organizational features, it was designed for somebody who really likes to file away information, be super organized, color coded, um, et cetera. So pirates and filers. And you said it, Dwayne said it actually organized and unorganized. So yeah, I think we we're getting warmer here. So that was a little one note trivia. Um, so excited to play that that little game with you today. So I have a few topics today. One note live captions. That's a brand new feature. We just announced that um, last week. Uh, reflect check ins inside of uh, class notebook is actually a brand new feature as well. Page sorting itself in the desktop version of one note. OneNote Windows 10 and iPad is a relatively new feature. The, the ability to embed an image into a background itself is not a new feature, but um, being able to do that in the web is a relatively new feature. I will share a few meeting tips here, um, and somebody already mentioned it, but the ability to print to OneNote is my top favorite. I actually wrote my dissertation inside of OneNote, so I captured all my articles and was able to uh, draft out different chapters all inside of OneNote. So definitely familiar with that. And I have a super special bonus add in. This is like the best kept secret. It only works in one version of OneNote. I don't want to give it away right now, but I'm actually going to uh, move that up probably to this area before we go over tips. But I'm super ecstatic to share a special bonus add in. So let's go ahead and get started. Some of you may uh, be familiar with uh, this brand new uh, feature called Live Captions. We just made an announcement last week, but with Live Captions, we are actually using the technology built into Microsoft Translator, uh, which allows, of course, translation in 100 plus languages. And it's really a cool workflow for not only students, but quite honestly, it, it'd be helpful for me myself when I'm in meetings to be able to translate, highlight, um, pause, and play as needed. You're able to see that. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick demo on those live captions right inside of uh, OneNote here. And I know this is probably going to come up, but the versions that we have it available in right now is when the OneNote uh, from Windows 10 app. We have it in um, the web app. We also have it in Mac, and we also have it in the iPad version from OneNote. 
right? It's also available on the Teams web client and the Teams desktop client. So I'm going to go ahead and share here. So on my phone here, I am starting a translator session. So the one thing that you need to do to start this off is you'll need a join code. So I'm going to drop the join code in here. And I'm going to join. So I'm going to record my voice as we kind of go over this demo. So you'll see um, the voiceover start to come here as it's captured with these live captions. The coolest thing to think, the coolest thing about this, you can go ahead and highlight in real time. Um, you can also copy and paste. So if I wanted to, let's say the instructor is still speaking and you know it's too much information for me at the time and I needed to pause and you know just catch just process everything and kind of make it a little bit more digestible for myself. I can pause the captions as the instructor still speaks, right? And throughout that time, um, the captions will still be captured when I hit resume. So everything that the instructor said, uh, everything that the instructor said will still show up when I hit resume. So as you know, I've had it paused for a second there and I hit resume and all that content will um, show back up. So I think it's a really cool um, feature that it really, you know, gives um, that inclusive accessible, accessible experience for students. Now notice I can also increase the size and I can just drag this over. So if this is a really good quote, I'm going to stop my highlighting here. If this is a really good, good quote that I want to make sure that I capture as a student, I can copy and paste that content. So say I want to pause it here and say I want to copy that content. Let me stop highlighting. Here we go. And I want to copy this content here. I can copy it and just drag it over to my OneNote. Right, so I, I know many of you on the call have probably been in situations when you were like me and many years ago in undergrad and you were trying to write everything the teacher said. Um, you can actually solve for that with this tool. I know we all have pain points from previous experiences with that. So I know the big question that you'll get, especially if you're in the IT side. So, you know, how does this work? What what does it look like on the back end in terms of, you know, is there a transcript involved, et cetera, et cetera? The short answer is yes. So there is a transcript um, that uh, students would essentially have. So there's a transcript section here where it will capture everything that's being um, you know, said. It even remembers what I highlighted, right? So that transcript section is here. Say if you're a student and you don't necessarily need a transcript section or you don't, don't necessarily want that, you can go right down here to settings and you can disable that here, right? And you can also change your captions language, of course. And this is where the Microsoft Translator, uh, you know, features come into play where you have the plethora of languages to choose from. So super excited about this um, and how it works. And again, it will be coming to uh, OneNote Desktop if we do have OneNote Desktop users on the on the call or listening to the recording it will be coming um, there so eventually so for right now again available on the web windows for 10 mac and ipad um, so i just wanted to share this brand new um, update with you i'm going to pause just check for any questions Okay, I think we have one question around uh, Microsoft Translate session. So yeah, so the student or you know faculty member or whoever is using the live captions will need to have a join code to input into um, this area right here. You will need that join code. So yes, short answer is yes. You will you will need that join code uh, for sure. Okay. So the next feature I wanted to share here. Uh, is the reflect and check-ins inside of Class Notebook. So just to level set, reflect is a tool that we recently launched 
um, this past fall, uh, which really targets the social emotional domain. If you think about uh, the different, you know, uh, components of a student's experience. Social emotional learning has uh, definitely been a focal point um, throughout, you know, the country um, over the last several uh, years. So with that being said, if I'm an instructor, I'm able to go here inside of my class notebook tab here, click on reflect and I can ask a question and I can customize that question, right? So in this scenario, the students are learning about plate tectonics and those questions can be uh, customized. So it can be a, a question related to the understanding of content. Um, you know, you can have those questions uh, customized and you'll see the question will pop up right here live inside of the OneNote page itself. Show another view on the on the on the, the front end and the back end on how it looks. So. Um, you have the ability to, again, customize that question. You can add it directly to the page. Um, some of you are familiar with the Reflect app, which you can add directly to a Teams post. You guys are probably familiar with that. Um, but in this scenario, it would live inside of OneNote. So this is how it would look after st the students complete the check-in. Um, you'll be able to see the data here as well. Um, so you'll get all that data kind of you know, uh, specific to students, you'll be able to see uh, that data and kind of filter through their feelings related to that specific question. So I'm just going to pause real quick, real quick to look at the questions just to see if we have any questions. All right, I think we're in good shape. I was going to save this to later, but I'm so excited to share this and again it's not new but it's such a a cool tool that i think is really just a hidden gem that i just want to share how many of you have heard of one tastic one tastic in the chat okay mm, okay yes one tastic so for those of you who don't know what one tastic is I'm going to go here. This now this is only available in OneNote, the desktop uh, version of OneNote, but I have it here. I'll kind of share on the just to give you an overview of exactly what it is. So um, it is a free tool that you can embed directly into OneNote, the desktop version, and it's filled of macros. So macros meaning, you know, kind of like sub programs. Um, that are used for, you know, operations or um, if you're trying to uh, create a create a automate a task or create a function, um, you're able to do that through macros. You can actually build out your own macros um, inside of this tool. So this is what it is. I'll drop the link in the chat, but I want to show you a few cool pre-built ones. So I downloaded it here. You can see it lives on my home on, on, in my ribbon here and in the home tab um, I can launch OneNote calendar the thing I really like about OneNote calendar is I can see all the updates that have been made to my specific uh, OneNote pages I can see all of the updates that have been made just by clicking on these links it'll take me directly to those updates that have been made like so whenever I create a page or I add content I can just go back historically in my calendar to see um, when updates have been made. In addition to that, one of the coolest ones that I really like, I think that could be a real time saver, is this table of contents um, option. So you can have a table of contents built out uh, for each particular section. So say if you have a section with a plethora of pages, because you know one note can be for Powlers or Fowlers. So if you like to really keep your things organized and section groups and things of that sort, um, you can have that set up or you can have it set up for one particular section, but you can determine the scope uh, with the section groups or, you know, versus section versus pages. Um, you can have it set to collapse or if you choose not to have it set to collapse, you can choose that as well. Uh, but this is so cool to me. I think it's a co really cool feature. Again, unfortunately, it's only available and OneNote the desktop uh, version, but you have that. I'm just going to show you 
um, other macros that can be downloaded. Just so you can kind of see the library, so to speak here, of things that you can have downloaded, all these different types of rules, you know, all these kind of automated kind of preset sub programs um, that you can have running with your OneNote. So some really cool features here um, that you can play with. So um, I encourage you to think about how this could work for you. I use the calendar one so I can kind of keep myself abreast of what's going on, especially think about if you're doing like multi-user collaboration where you're having multiple folks kind of collaborate on a particular page. Yes, it will turn bold, so you kind of know there was an update, but if you just wanted that calendar glance to see, um, you know, those pages that have been updated, you can see that. Um, there's also a weekly planner in here, uh, which is pretty cool that you can add as well. I'm going to pause real quick, check the chat, see if we have any questions. Yes, great, great question, Mark. Yes, so OneNote desktop version has been rejuvenated. Um, so you're definitely going to see more and more features coming to OneNote desktop. Um, again, that was my first love. So when I heard that, I was excited as well. So um, yes, it is being rejuvenated and you'll see more and more videos coming out, um, YouTube videos from Mike coming out in regards to those updates. All right, so I know we have just a, a few more minutes here. I do want to make sure that everybody sees this feature and I'm going to use I'm going to go ahead and use. Um, this version of OneNote, this is OneNote for the Windows 10 app, so you guys can get different views here, um, but um, you can actually filter here and sort your pages alphabetically date created date modified. So I can I just switch these two. If you want to um, say you're in a situation where you did not want to filter them and you wanted to kind of go back to the original way the pages were built and the pages were added to the different sections, you can just click none and it will go back to the original way. So um, that's definitely a cool feature that I think uh, many people will appreciate. Um, and again, that's available in OneNote desktop, OneNote uh, for Windows 10 and OneNote for iPad. So uh, that is a relatively new feature. Um, that may have just crept up on you, but it, it is a new feature that has um, been rolling out. All right, so you can filter those pages and sort those pages there. And if you didn't know, you can also, I'll just share this real quick, the meeting details. It's a really cool feature that you can use. Um, you can drop meeting details in here and you can expand participants. So if I click here, it will open the list of participants. You can create those meeting notes as well. I think pretty much many of you know that you can print to OneNote as well. Um, so if there's a, a, a web page or um, a PDF that you want to just live inside of OneNote, um, you can have that printed to OneNote. One other thing that's a new feature that I definitely want everybody to know, um, you can set images to background on the web now. That existed on you know, the desktop and the Windows 10 version, but now it's available on the web. So if I have this image here, as you can see, I can move it. But if I set it to desktop, uh, or excuse me, set it as a background uh, picture, uh, I can have it, um, a, I can have content laid over it. Or there's another brand new feature where you can use the draw to touch here and you can draw over it. Or if you want to highlight content while you're taking uh, your live captions. Um, you can have that kind of displayed here and you have the ability to use those different features. So definitely um, some really cool scenarios in which you might want to uh, have that image kind of pasted in the background um, and, and stationary there. You, de you definitely might have some scenarios in which you might want to use that. So I have a couple more things here I just want to share. Um, as we go on to the transcripts, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that this can be disabled. So the first time I did this, it popped up. Now it took about a minute or so for that section to pop up, but it will pop up the first time and that section will stay there. So that st section actually remains there um, and you'll be able to 
you know, kind of go back to all of your transcripts, so to speak. Um, over time, whenever you use a live captions, those transcripts uh, will live there. Check the chat real quick just to see if we have any questions. Okay. All right. So I wanted to share a few resources with you. I have a special treat for you for joining today. I actually created a um, OneNote, uh, or actually my team member created a OneNote icebreaker activity. So the next time you're doing a virtual meeting or you want to break the ice a little bit, I'm going to drop a link in here uh, in the chat for you to access. It's a cool icebreaker. It's about five um, uh, password protected pages and you have to figure out the clue. The clues are already here, so I'm going to Drop the clues in the chat as well. So you can copy and paste that, but those are the clues that you can use and the activities that you can do um, as a part of the icebreaker. Some of you may wonder or may be wondering, how do I password protect? Um, that is a feature that you can find in OneNote, the desktop um, version. So I will show that really quickly. So if I wanted to password protect this section, I'm able to do that by right clicking here and clicking on password protect. And I would create a password, et cetera. So that is something that you can do. But again, that's a, just a virtual breakout room um, that you can do. Just wanted to give you that content and I'm dropping all of the content from our session today inside the chat. And I guess, uh, Garrett, do we want to open it up for questions or wrap up? Yeah, absolutely. I'm actually going to go ahead and stop the recording. So thanks so much for joining today. So let me stop this.